What is up YouTube and welcome to this Walking Dead The World Beyond Breakdown and Review. It's been quite a while since I've done anything Walking Dead related on this channel because I had a bit of a break not only with YouTube but also with covering The Walking Dead, one of my favourite comic books of all time ever since I picked up the first trade paperback when it was released. Now since I heard of this show I really did want to get back into the world of The Walking Dead and I've got back in a big way catching up with the main TV show, and also I'm currently working on getting up to speed with Fear the Walking Dead. But the idea of a limited series is pretty cool, as it allows us to have a definite end to the show, as many shows seem to amble on long before their natural end and become bloated, much like the main show, unfortunately. But it seems to be getting back on track there. Now, if episode one of this show was a statement of intent, then this episode follows up in what can only be described as a somewhat of a runaways knockoff, or as they call themselves, the endlings on their march to New York to find Iris and Alexa's father, and really the wider mystery of the incredibly secretive CRM, which is where our boy Rick currently is. Hopefully he's still alive, which pretty sure he will be. Now, I won't lie, the idea of a new spin-off with a bunch of kids who have a blinkered view of the outside world didn't really interest me at the start. However, I would have preferred something a bit more kind of, I would say, law-based, where we see the CRM, the insides of the CRM, that kind of thing. As things like The Last of Us, games like that, the factions really interested me more than a single group of people walking onwards on an endless death march. However, it's, well, going to be a bit of a slog there as they have hundreds and hundreds of miles, or thousands even, to New York. So we join them here in episode two on their trek. And we see them go to things like the treehouse and they got like maybe 20 miles, if that, away from their original kind of setting off point. So yes, it's going to be a total slog. But at the start of the episode, we open with a lecture on how to take down a walker, which are being called the Empties here. Now, I hate when different shows in the same universe refer to things differently. It's like Harry Potter, where in the Harry Potter movies, we they were called Muggles, and then in the Fantastic Beast movies, they were called Nomadges. Just absolutely bizarre. But we see Iris struggle as she is a bookish smart person but they've been protected for far too long just like the main show crew lost their edge every time they settled down which allowed alpha to kill some of them at the fair the kids are on their what they seem as a noble task but they are 100 percent unprepared as they are followed by felix and huck but iris struggles to make her first kill something we have seen heavily throughout the entire universe of the show when people first come into contact with the dead. The CIRM is still a looming mystery, but we get flashbacks to Elton's life throughout the episode as we learn his father kicked him out for being gay despite bringing all the money in and later even refusing help when he was trying to save them from Z-Day. The Z-Day, for the lack of a better term, flashbacks are so very, very good in this show, and something I thought Fear the Walking Dead would originally be about, but instead it evolved into a clone of the main show. Elton is by far and away the best character in this young group. He pivots the nerd or Eugene-style character into an enjoyable person keen to save the world by using his initiative, and it really is great writing here in my opinion. Now, not a lot happens this episode as we see Felix and Huck try to find the kids as the group leave a pretty telling trail. It's glaringly obvious that one of the two adults will actually die, leaving the survivor to be a mentor to these naive kids. We've got two seasons and it seems to be going very, very slowly so far. Well, they have no homes really to return to, with Episodes 1 community all but being destroyed by the CRM with a zombie outbreak and really a lot of murder, probably. They seem to really destroy anything that is perceived as a threat to their status quo. They were secretive in Fear the Walking Dead, obviously secretive with Jadis in the main show, and now they still won't even tell groups who are aligned with them what 
is really going on. The showrunners have said that Rick is not going to be a welcome guest of the mysterious group. He's not going to be welcomed with open arms to become a leader-style figure. And we learned with Iris's father, this is foreshadowing the victim of the CRM and that they are just out to get what they want. Now, the treehouse scene was odd, as it's just kids being kids. However, thus far, the kids seem far removed from the grizzled apocalypse veterans that, well, it doesn't seem to be the relief of the scene that the writers seem want. It didn't seem like it, they had the impact of really what they wanted. And the in-jokes of Big Mo and Monopoly being played didn't really have that kind of feel of, well, wait, hold on, these are actually children at the end of the day. Because so far, they've been very naive. They haven't had that harsh reality of going outside of their four walls just yet. They start to realise that there is a massive tyre fire, which is a beacon for all of the dead, providing a rationale as to why they've barely faced any walkers thus far. And to be honest, I like the herd idea of spraying people with uh, with spray paint and seeing where they go. That's quite interesting. It's something I'm, I would like to see explored a bit more. But the final 10 minutes were the best of a largely dull episode, I have to say, as they cannot see the sun and can't work out where they're meant to be going and they couldn't get around the tire fire. We had a touching moment where Felix arrived at his old home to kill his Walker family, but he couldn't do it. He just couldn't bring himself to do it. As the group find the true magnitude of the fire, as Elton decides to use a siren, or comes up with the idea at least, to use a tornado siren to get rid of the herd, but it seems like Hope is going to actually go alone and do it herself, which means that she's at risk. And let's not forget, this is a limited series, so it will be tough to see where this will actually go, because I don't think that any character is really safe thus far, other than maybe Iris, I think. It's signalling her to be, or to evolve over the show moves on and considering that they will be going through the walking dead territory they will be going through that area well on their way to new york it'll be interesting to see if we will get any crossovers so i i am keen to see where this goes but overall it's a bit of a slog of a show and that is more a fault of the medium of of the topic because there's a lot of walking, they're kids, they can't drive, and I'd imagine kind of 10 or 11 years on from Z-Day, well, <laughs> there's, there's not that many cars left, or at least cars with fuel that they can actually find. However, it does look good, and I'm excited to see where it does go next. But if you're interested, if you want this series to continue on this channel, please drop a like, please subscribe with notifications on, and comment below, as if it gets the views, I'll, I, will, I will carry on doing this, and I will do Fear the Walking Dead as well, if you're interested in that. But that is it for this video. I'll see you soon, and goodbye.